Hello, I'm a nostalgia critic. I remember it so you don't have to. Let's talk about Inspector Gadget. It was a show in the 1980s about a half-human, half-robot detective. Uh, <laughs> no. This one was funny. INTENTIONALLY FUNNY! It centered around the Inspector's bumbling antics to stop a supervillain named Dr. Claw, while Gadget's young niece, Penny, and a dog named Brain, would go behind his back and solve the crime for him. It wasn't anything special, but for kids, it wasn't that bad. It had a smart, humble role model who never got the credit, but was just happy to see justice done. It had a menacing villain you never saw who had a pretty intimidating voice. Well, well, what a delightful surprise. And of course, it had that kick-ass song. Doing a movie on this premise, however, would be tricky, but not impossible. Great care would have to be taken. Let's see, um... I know! Let's get that idiot who said that's a lot of fish from Godzilla! And while we're at it, why don't we get that moron who ruined Madonna's career? No, the other one. There you go! And finally, let's get one of the greatest directors of all time, the one who directed the coming-of-age classic, Cool as Ice. I smell genius! No As if that trio of idiots wasn't enough. This movie has horrible writing, terrible jokes, and follows the show about as closely as, well, casting John Leguizamo as Luigi. I mean, it's bad. This shit is really, really bad. So go, go, Gadget, fuck a movie, because we're in for quite an experience. This is Inspector Gadget. So as the film begins, I have to admit, it is pretty cool hearing the theme song in a motion picture. But that quickly changes when we see the cock face himself, Matthew Broderick. Good morning, Officer Brown! Very well. Officer Brown, how do you do? Yeah, he hasn't even said anything and already I hate him. We see this annoying dream sequence where he saves a bus of kids from danger when we suddenly cut to cliche number 5621, thinking you're kissing a woman when really you're kissing an animal. Go, go, gadget rehash. Brain. <laughs> Having another hero cop dream, Uncle John. By the way, this is Penny, everybody. Yeah, they couldn't even get a blonde girl to play the part. They said two years as a security guard isn't enough experience to be a cop. Uncle John, I'm sorry. And of course, just like in the show, her parents are... Not around. And thus, Uncle Gadget, known right now as Uncle Brown, is left alone to take care of her. This is Brain. He looks nothing like the cartoon, doesn't talk, so let's move on. It's not the badge, it's the heart behind it. I'm very proud of you. Well, wait, 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 wow! The hell was that? What? Nothing? Anyone? We're, we're not gonna address that? Okay, uh, we'll just come back to that later. We see a scientist played by Odo from Deep Space Nine and his daughter Brenda as they're trying to work on a new invention that can control robotic limbs by the power of the mind. Tap your foot again. What, what were you thinking about? I was thinking about how much you remind me of your mother. That's it! It's animated by will, not by thought. By your heart, not your head. Oh, I see. So it's love that fuels scientific mental animatronic limb repair. Oh, and this just in, believing in fairies can regenerate dead tissue back to life as well. <laughs> okay, time out! What the hell is that? Well, why are there suddenly random things popping up in the segways? <laughs> Unless... those are the segways? Okay, film 101, guys. When you do a transition, you want something that actually... Transitions, not incredibly distracts from everything. You see guys, when you do something this annoying and this distracting, it doesn't add to the style, it just takes away from the story. What little there is. I mean, if you're gonna go that far, why not just go all the way? Why don't you do this? We did it! <laughs> So Brown, it turns out, is a security guard at the doctor's place, and often makes chit-chat with the doctor's daughter, Brenda. But little do they know that the evil Dr. Claw is watching, and ready to steal the robotic foot for his own diabolical needs. 
Maybe he's hoping to start an animatronic kickball team. He zaps the doctor, I think, gets shot and edited by a monkey, and Brenda comes across the lab and sees what happened. Dr. Bradford, I won't rest until I find whoever's responsible. Justice will be served. Look at that! I almost pulled out of my wide-eyed blandness and delivered an actual human emotion, but I pulled back into the blandness just in time. <laughs> oh, that was too much emotion there. <clears throat> Just in time. So Brown goes after the bad guys to see if he can make justice prevail. Oh no, we've been chased by the hatchback squad. Um, were you meaning to keep Dr. Claw in the shadows? Cause you are aware you're revealing him quite clearly right now. Now he's back in the shadows again. Are we just supposed to forget you revealed him right there? I mean, we saw it. There's no surprise now. We know what he looks like. Why put him back in the shadows if you just showed his face? I mean, it's sort of like starting off the original Star Wars movie with... The Imperial Senate will not sit still for this. When they hear you've attacked a diplomat... Don't talk back to me, young lady. That is no way to speak to your father. Oh, shit. You're not supposed to know that yet. Um, just forget that part, everybody. Totally not important. <laughs> uh, carry help. I don't know what you're talking about. Good, good. Go with that. Take her away. Dodged a bullet. <laughs> So Dr. Claw finally reveals himself, again, and uses an explosive to blow him up. Remember, smoking kills. <laughs> By the way, did I mention in the cartoon that Dr. Claw never reveals himself? And even if he did, would this be at all what you imagine he looked like? I imagine he looks like a monster. I imagine he looks like a machine. I imagine he looks like that gay guy from my best friend's wedding. No one else? So the explosion leaves Brown about as broken as his acting. Brenda makes a plea that he always thinks with his heart, so he'd be perfect for their weird-ass little robot operation. Thus, all the doctors come together to put Mr. Brown back together. Oh, are they loading him with cartoon sound effects? Ready and ready! We see that Claw, actually, has a Claw now, so he decides to give himself that name. Yeah, I forgot to mention, his name wasn't actually Claw this whole time, it was Sanford Skolex. Just Claw. One word. Like Madonna. So, let's just recap. Dr. Claw isn't called Dr. Claw, he doesn't own a terrorist organization called Mad, he sounds less like a monster and more like a fashion critic, and the fact that you never see him in the show is being replaced with seeing him all the time! I mean, wow! Did they get one thing right? Why did you change so much? Were you afraid if you stuck too closely to the cartoon that wouldn't be taken as seriously? Need I remind you this movie has scenes like this? <laughs> yeah, wouldn't want to face that! So Brown wakes up and finds that his entire body is laced with, and let's be fair here, mostly pointless shit. What? Yeah, you never know when you might need a balloon. Or bubbles. Fucking bubbles! There's no security guards looking after this walking human atom bomb. Just let him press the nuclear button. He'll be fine. Mr. Brown, you've just come out of a very long recovery. You are now a sophisticated network of tissue hardware and software. No! I gotta get out of here. My God, is he bad. I'm sorry, this guy's a marvel. Truly a gift to bad acting. It's like he never knows which delivery to give, so he sort of stops halfway and decides to maybe go with another one. Maybe. No! I gotta get out of here. No! I gotta get out of here. I know that this is all new for you. And it must feel strange. By the way, you hear those really annoying sound effects that won't shut the fuck up? Yeah, get used to that, people. It's all throughout the movie. It's like he swallowed Gerald McBoing-Boing or something. No! 
So Brenda explains to him exactly how he functions and how they'll be able to keep him alive. It's a high-powered processor chip that increases the charge in the human brainwave enough to move the machinery that's now built into your body. But we still can't make you act. Without this chip, your body couldn't possibly function. Any more questions? Nope. Then I will just give you your manual to study. Heart of gold, everybody. He's so innocent that he actually makes monkey sounds whenever he sees a woman's behind. Go, go, Gadget hard on. No! She continues to show him how his junk works, and oddly enough, that's not as disturbing as it sounds. And Brown tries to get the hang of it. There were two guys trying to rob a jewelry store, and you wanted to trip them up. What would you do? Go, go, Gadget oil slay. That's not oil, it's toothpaste! Okay, why would anyone put that much toothpaste inside of him? I mean, how many emergencies require toothpaste? And why a hose? Is there really a situation where you need to shoot toothpaste from a hose? And why did it come out when he said oil slick? And why the fuck can't we see Dr. Claw? I'm sorry, I'm still on that. So he's introduced to his new set of wheels, a convertible. Wow. And just to ante up the annoyance in this film, they're proud enough to have the car voiced by D.L. Hewley. Oh, what a delight. Good morning, Riverton. Hey, who's in the car? I work alone. I'm a crime fight machine. Watch this. Back turn. Speed limits are for cars, not the gadget mobile. Guess it could be worse. They could be having Chris Tucker doing the voice of the car. Gadget, look out! Look out, gadget! Oh my god! Look out! Give me left turn! Left turn, gadget! Hey, don't you touch my radio! Don't you ever touch a black car's radio, boy! Look out! Touch your side effects! Side effects! Go! Oh my god! Oh my god! Seatbelt. Gotta wear the hey, belt, baby. It's a Disney movie. Oh, no, did you see that? 